when Ava was one, we broke up for a while. Mm. Like we were living separately. We were just not in a good place. We were both young. And there's been times where I've envied him for making more money than me. And he's been able to go on holidays and do all these things. And it was like, this is early days of our relationship. And I resented him because I was at home with a child. And it was like, this is unfair. I've given up my body. I was still young in my head. And, you know, he was going out partying, doing all this stuff. So we, it hasn't always been smooth sailing. <laughs> Ava was enrolled to go to a school and we went along for the opening day um, and we met the woman who would have been her teacher and I was just watching her behavior with Ava and she wasn't particularly kind she wasn't particularly and I started assessing her and being like I don't know anything about this woman's beliefs I don't know you know how she's actually going to behave when I'm not even stood in front of her and I was like she's going to be spending more time with my child every day than I am and I just went away feeling really unsettled I remember telling my dad about the experience and he was like well she doesn't have to go to school on today's episode influencer mother homeschooling and wellness advocate Coral Golding Coral hi thank you so much for joining me today oh thank you so much I um, am very very excited have this conversation with you today because as I was going through your life story I saw so many similarities and so many points in common that we have so I'm really excited thank you thank you so much for having me I'm really I mean this is my first podcast excited <laughs> so thank you for inviting me to do this I'm really excited absolutely thank you so I would really like to go back to your early days I like to do that with my guests to better understand them and you had a, an unusual childhood you were in a Buddhist community yeah. at 12 years old, which is quite unorthodox. And I would like to ask you a little bit more about the influence your dad had on you in shaping you into the person that you are today. Because he seems to have made a couple of things, moves, let's say, in your life that really influenced the trajectory of your life later on. So he took you to a Dharma class when you were nine years old. Yeah. And he also was the one who suggested that you homeschool your kids. Yeah. Is it safe to say that he is your role model? Yes, he definitely is and was my role model. Yeah. Definitely. So how how did that whole dynamic with spirituality evolve? Tell me a little bit more about your dad and your relationship. So he actually, when we were growing up, he was quite the opposite of what he grew into in his 60s. Um, I mean, I remember him, he just used to go to the pub a lot. Um, he was just a, quite a you know normal father. And then all of a sudden, he got into dharma and that was it he was like a changed person and i remember going along with him to a class and i was so small that my feet couldn't even touch the floor <laughs> when i was sitting on the chair and i got really into it with him and it became our thing that we would go to weekly mm -hmm. and obviously at that age i didn't really understand a lot of it um but it was there and that and i feel so grateful that i was introduced at such a young young age because those lessons are just there for me whenever I need them. It's, it's kind of my go-to. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If I feel unsure about anything or what to do, yeah. For the audience that doesn't know what Dharma is, could oh, you explain Buddhism. that? Mm. So, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I it, it, we call it Dharma, but yeah, it's Buddhism. So that really changed your perspective on life in a way? Yeah, I think, I mean, I know um, it's, it's kind of more about what your purpose is um here on this planet it's like why are we having this human experience like what's what is it for um and it's all about kind of just being compassionate to other people i mean i'm still learning now i still go to dharma classes so even though i was introduced at a long, young age it, there's so many different aspects to it so i'm still learning myself but yeah that's really really interesting one of my favorite questions to ask is about purpose to my guests so as we as we already touched upon the topic what is yours well, ultimately to find enlightenment, I suppose. You know, it's like we, within Dharma, they say that we are given, there's different realms. So say after rebirth, you might come back as an animal, you might come back as a human. But if you are fortunate enough to have a human rebirth and then one that also has Dharma involved, you have the capacity to change you know other people's lives with your compassion with your teaching and you could ultimately find enlightenment so eventually i mean obviously now i have young children and i'm homeschooling so i can't dedicate that much time to dharma but ultimately that is why i feel i have this human existence right now so your understanding of the concept of purpose really ties back to to buddhism yeah yeah mm. and as much as it's so difficult because there are so many temptations in life you know with 
whether it be monetary, um, travel, whatever it is. But really, I know deep down that that's what matters. But then I just get distracted by all these other things that are kind of so tempting. Um, but really, I feel like even when my kids are a bit older, that's what I'll focus a lot more of my time and energy on. How do you obtain that enlightenment? Um, really, it's about kind of being as kind as you can to other people and helping other people as much mm -hmm. as you can. And also finding stillness in your mind and clarity in your mind and not and realizing emptiness that this world is it doesn't it's not going to bring you happiness ultimate ultimately mm. do you know what i mean and not having attachment the external to that world is, not, yeah. is yeah. not going to bring you happiness if you seek that happiness Ex outside of yourself exterior, the, mm. the exterior kind of material other people all these things are not going to bring you happiness you can only really find happiness in yourself and that is ultimately what it's all about i think yeah that's that's definitely the ultimate truth and this is even a thought that keeps going through my mind day after day especially recently it's like everything we need we already have everything we need we have within us we if we're sad all we need to do is we need to go outside the nature is healing the sunlight is healing get good sleep you're gonna have all the energy you need you're feeling stressed dance yeah yeah sing. but the sad thing is we know all this <laughs> and yet we do we do the opposite do you yeah. know what I mean? We lock ourselves in these glass or brick cages and we don't spend much time outside in nature. We stare at these screens all the time and look outside of us for happiness. And it's like, it doesn't exist there. It doesn't work You're always going to want more, no matter what you have. You've got a Ferrari and you see a Lamborghini and you want that. It's like- And then you want a Bugatti. Not, yeah, you're never- And then how many Bugattis do you have? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, the thing is I love, don't get me wrong. Like I love nice things. I like to feel nice, but I know it's not really the true nature of happiness. Yeah. But I do have to remind myself. And that's why I feel like I'm still learning as well. And this I mean? is such an important point. Reminders. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons also why I'm doing this even. It's just talking about things that matter. Reminding about things that we all know. Yeah. But we need those reminders. Like I, I forget the things that I journaled a month ago. Oh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. Um, yeah, I heard someone say recently, they were talking about goals. And they were like, you really should look at your goals and write them down every single day. Every single day. Yeah. Every Which I'm starting day. to do, but then you still have days and you're like, oh. But you know, yeah. it does work. Uh, yeah. This this New Year's resolution, anyway, one of the things that I did is I really um, did this whole rundown of the past year in detail and then also kind of planning and prepping for the next year. And one yeah. of the things is also I set kind of all of the goals, all the things that I'd like to achieve. And I literally look at that every single morning. It's amazing. It does help. It it's, does, it's like It's like it? an anchor. And After a while, it, it starts... When, when, when going gets tough and there's this moment and you're sad and you're down, you remember why you're doing it. Yeah. You have those things at the back of your head. It's like, oh, no, I want to do this because I want to create it's this charity. Why you're going in that direction. Or, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. get there or I want to learn this thing yeah. or I want to help, help that person. And once you, repetition is key, right? So once yeah. <laughs> it's almost like etched in your brain, etched yeah. in your mind. But I feel like for me, even I was thinking I was saying the other day is that now after the past year, like I've been listening to a lot of like meditations and affirmations and all these things. And it's only recently that I feel like it's paying off. You know, when it's like, because mm. I've listened daily and I was like, is, is this pointless? Like, is this not, you know, is this actually doing anything? And then all of a sudden things start to materialize and you're like, wow, th those tiny bits of consistency, those small consistent actions are starting to pay off. They yeah. don't evaporate. No, they don't. Definitely. Evaporate. But also you can't expect for things to just happen like that as well. And that's another thing that I feel like I've learned. I know opportunities do come to you from the universe, but I do feel like it's the consistent work that you do daily that gives you the results. Definitely. This also reminds me, I told you we're gonna yeah, have yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. uh, Exactly on this topic of not maybe seeing the, the results immediately, but them really accumulating to help you down the line. So last year in the beginning of the year, I was doing quite a lot of hypnotherapy. Oh wow. Marissa Peer does that really, really well. And so for months on end, I would be kind of playing these tracks of hypnotherapy, you know, that are catered to different different uh, areas of your life that you want to improve. And the changes I felt in that inner voice were immense. And you, it doesn't happen overnight, but even today, a year after, I can feel it, I can sense it. You know that inner voice that we always have that accompanies us, right? Yeah. sometimes and for many people it's 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 a for most people yeah, actually it's a debbie is. downer yeah, yeah, you know yeah. it's it's the harshest critic and don't get me wrong also for me but then 
because of the, that work that I did of kind of going into the subconscious and reprogramming those beliefs, mm -hmm. then that voice becomes kinder in a way. Yeah. So it's over the, the negativity is kind of overridden by that new Yeah, thing. but this is what is it's even like the listening to the affirmations. It's like that then starts to overweigh, yes. doesn't it? And that's why you start to feel different. It's like, and then your go-to uh, emotion is positive rather than negative. And you start to feel more positive, you know, more, much more of the time, don't you? Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just want to touch upon once again on your dad, because I feel like that's such a lucky and such a big blessing to have somebody in your family that guides you towards spirituality. Yeah. I mean, I'm really fortunate because my mum, obviously living in a Dharma center as well, all together. Mm -hmm. So I feel, because my mum lives with us. So I'm able to have these conversations with her about Dharma as well. So even though my dad introduced me, we're so lucky, I feel, that yes. I kind of Th have that. That you have that the whole family, family yeah, support. Yeah, yeah. yeah that mm -hmm. is invaluable. In my own family, my, my mother is really, really spiritual and she's been practicing alternative medicine for over 40 years. Amazing. And she's, you know, into into meditation, into breath work, into yoga, into every single alternative kind of therapy that you can imagine. <laughs> but then it means you can have all these conversations with somebody. Yes. And that's probably why part of this interest kind of stems from as yeah. well. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah. I, I have this vivid memory of when I was probably four years old, um, we were doing this meditation, I think of past life meditation. Oh, wow. And there was obviously I was I was a kid, oh, I didn't yeah, understand yeah. anything, but I remember this beautiful uh, mantra kind of chanting and, you know, these candles and this kind of peace, absolute peace and serenity. I still remember even the melody and the words. Can wow. you imagine that? That is crazy. I really value, I really value that. And I think people that have gone through that spiritual path in their life or have been able to incorporate some levels of kind of spirituality in their life. They just have that another layer of depth to them mm -hmm. also in the ability to relate to other people and yeah. to have that compassion which is what you mentioned already as well yeah well i think ultimately how good do you feel when you make someone else feel good mm. there's no comparison is yeah. there and that is compassion isn't it and that's what i'm saying about happiness is that you sure you you know it might bring you temporary happiness to buy something or travel somewhere but then there's going to be you know a, something that that disrupts that happiness. Mm. Whether is when you give or you make someone feel nice or you give a compliment, you're only going to feel better, aren't you? In Latvia, we have the saying, which is shared joy is a double joy and a shared sorrow is half a sorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's very that true. That's so true. Yeah. yeah. Love that. Right. So as I look through your life, Mm -hmm. the conventional way never seems to have been the one for you no so you dropped out of uni yeah and then you went on traveling and you went to Mallorca and Ibiza yeah. was that for work or was that for party both, both. so I worked but tell me party. about that tell me about that how did that work oh gosh so um <laughs> <laughs> originally went to Mallorca when I was 19 lived with my best friend Charlie we just, I mean, we were working, mm -hmm. but really we were just like going out all the time, drinking loads. Like, it, yeah, it was super, Was super it like fun. bartending or like it was? No, so we were like, we would stand on the door and try and get people in the club. Oh, yeah. Right. And promoting, then like basically take them promoting, in. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, when you give them like an offer for a yes, drink yes, and yes, then yes, you yes. try and get them in. Nice. Yeah, so that was our job. And we, yeah, there was four, four of us <laughs> living in a flat together. Yeah, it was just super fun but super unhealthy. You know, when you look back, we were literally discussing the train and it's like, how did we do that? Like, how did our bodies, well, obviously they did, you know, you get ill, but, um, and then Ibiza was, so I worked for a company called Ibiza Angels when I worked there, which I don't know if you've Sounds heard Sounds lovely. Of. No, I haven't. No, so <laughs> they, you basically go, go around in like, the nice club uh, the nightclubs in the vip areas and offer people massages like wow. with your clothes on so it's really nice oh, wow. and then people pay what they think the mass massages were so sometimes you might get like 20 euros for like a five minute massage or you might get like 200 euros if you've got like a wow. really big like flashy and i did that and then i actually got to travel america with that that same company as well which wow. was really cool i never yeah. heard about that that's so interesting yeah so you did that for for a couple of summers or yeah so did that mm -hmm. for a few summers um and then so when I was in, I actually went to Mallorca first. And then when I was in Mallorca, I got really, really ill um, and had to come home early. And I was like hospitalized with meningitis. Yes, so you had bad. meningitis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to touch upon that. Yeah. So 
after that happened, do you think it was impacted by the lifestyle that you were leading or was that completely unrelated? I don't, it's hard to tell, isn't it? But I, d- I don't think it would have helped. Like my immune sus- system must have been on like zero. Mm. I had no, I was eating like pizza every night. Do you know what I mean? Drinking like blue alcohol. It's Ooh. like there was, yeah, it <laughs> honestly was like the opposite of how I live my life now. Yeah. Like that's what I mean. I look back and I'm like, how did we do that? And so whether that had an impact or not, I don't know. But it can't have helped. You know, I, I really wanted to touch upon this because sometimes we look back at our past and we 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 judge and we blame ourselves like oh how could yeah, i do yeah. how could i have been this silly how could i have been this stupid why did i do this i could have done so much better etc but at least in my life experience i've always had to go through this elimination method almost mm-hmm. because when you don't know you don't know you know what, what you're and supposed they, they to do they become a lesson they become a lesson well, and those yeah. are the most valuable lessons so true yeah, if I hadn't have done that and then become ill, I wouldn't have got into nutrition in the same way. So it's like the universe, you know, knows what it's doing. Works in mysterious yeah. ways, right? <laughs> yeah. But but in the moment, it's so hard to realize that when bad things yeah, happen to you, you're like, yeah. oh, this, this is the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course. it ends up being often the best thing. And it's when you can look back, you know, like yeah. a year or so later, maybe 10 years later, and yeah. you realize, okay, that wasn't supposed to happen to me. Mm. Yeah. So you had meningitis and then healing through that process really triggered something in you. So yeah. what what changed in your life after that illness? So I came back, I was spent two weeks in hospital and then came back to the UK and I couldn't even walk up like one flight of stairs. I was so weak. And my dad had been practicing yoga and he all of a sudden got into nutrition. He was actually on, um, I don't know if you heard of macrobiotic diet. It's kind of like just no processed food at all. Mm. And I just thought, oh, because my dad, you know, he was Buddhist, he did yoga. And I was always like, oh, my crazy dad. Do you know what I mean? As yeah, a yeah, teenager, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yes. oh, whatever, my dad's just doing what he's doing. And he said, let's make it a really fun project and try and heal your body and help you feel better through food. And I was like, well, how's that going to work? That sounds crazy. But then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> At the time, I didn't think, I was like, how's that going to work? And I just thought you would heal yourself through medicine. I didn't really understand that That's food was your medicine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um so we used to make it we used to go and have like fun trips or well fun trips we used to go to the supermarket and we would try and make it fun and he would say okay look for the carrot that looks like it's tried to work the hardest to get through the ground and that will have the most energy in it oh. so we would do things like that made me think about the correlation with how the energy and food would have a relationship on with the energy on your body mm-hmm. like in your body because it's, I guess it's very different when you actually see the food growing. You see where yeah. it's coming from. You see, you see the whole cycle almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This reminded me actually of my own childhood because oh. uh, once again, this I didn't even know that <laughs> you would tell me this, but um, I had a uh, benign tumor when I was uh, younger, and uh, me and my mother decided not to do surgery as we were advised, but to explore different alternative, um, you know, medicine avenues to to kind of um, cure myself. And one of the things that the first thing that we did actually that we implemented was complete change in my diet. And so what I did for I don't remember how long it was, it was maybe six months, maybe it was a year or even longer. I ate only basically not cooked food. So okay. raw food, raw food. Raw food. Yeah, 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 I've done a raw food. Yeah. And you do feel incredible. You do feel yeah. incredible. That was amazing. And, and it helped. And again, it's the energy of the food because yes. you're not cooking it. I mean, now I have different views on certain diets, but... I do feel that your energy and how the f- that raw food can heal you is incredible. Incredible. Yeah. And, you know, obviously there are, there, are, there are different diets, there are different ways, but the, the number one thing to really just remember and think about is literally food is medicine. Yeah. But also live food, real food, mm. you know, stuff in packets is not food. It's, it's actually not really for human consumption. That's, that's poison. And yeah, that's yeah, exactly. The opposite yeah. of medicine. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely feel like the more the more it's processed the more rounds of procession (laughs) the food has gone through the least beneficial it's going to be for you and they they say it's like if it's if it was made if it's put on this earth by god you can eat it yeah do you know what i mean it's like we're stripping away all the nutrients in in the process of processing them so what are we left with in the end i understand it's delicious it's cheap isn't it as well yeah and there's money to be made facts and yeah. this is the crux of it yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the business that's, an- that's a whole other story yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> oh we could get into <laughs> that yeah, right yeah. you went into nutrition yeah afterwards how how was that journey what did you i loved it i've just that's the thing i feel like it's something that i've just 
it was the first time in my life that I realized this is what I want to do. Mm. Whether, you know, I didn't actually study to become a nutritionist, but it was, I've, I've never stopped learning. It was like, it's something that I've, I'm fully interested in and it, yeah, it just keeps on growing. Mm. So you knew that this is going to, in some way, you're going to make it your work in a way. Yeah, I didn't even want it to be. It Which then became obviously the, through blogging. But this and is the thing, it wasn't even when I became interested in nutrition, it wasn't as though, you know, this is what I want to do with my life and my career. It mm -hmm. was just like, I'm so I love this. interested and passionate about this. So if it can, amazing. But it actually, that's not why I started mm. it. It's a true passion inside me that I just feel like it's just, it just makes so much sense as well. I love that. Having those things is so, so important. Yeah. And another one of things like that, I yeah. imagine, is when you went at 25 years old to India yeah. to train for as a yoga teacher yeah. to get to get qualified as a yoga teacher. And there you learned even more you, a, yeah, another yeah, yeah. array of tools for your it body, for so your mind. It's so exciting, <laughs> learning all the, the and uh, that's what I mean. I still feel like I'm constantly learning as well. Mm. It's like there's so many different avenues to explore and so many different It's like the different cultures or the different practices that you can do to help your body. And it's like, I just want to learn about all of them. Mm. And then it's almost like a process of elimination or more like intuitive eating or intuitive diet or intuitive movement, which then you can decide what works for you rather than putting like a label on it. I feel like I'm getting to the point now where it's like, okay, I'll take a little bit of that, a little bit of that and put it together for what works for me mm. rather than trying to fit in this box because that's when I feel like people can kind of struggle. You know. one size does not fit all no 100 we're different blood types we're different body types you know different genetics our family you know it's like we're from all over the world mm. aren't we and even now as well it's like our, the the toxins that are in our world our bodies have to fight so differently as well mm. it's not you know it's totally different to when our grandparents were growing up you know there weren't the same chemicals being sprayed on everything and even the nutritional value of products has been reduced yeah. drastically because of the quality of soil yeah and exactly. not enough nutrients in the soil That's also another issue massive that we've issue, into. <laughs> massive issue, but yeah. So if we go back to that um, training that you went through, yeah. did you at the time think that uh, maybe you'd like to be a yoga teacher? And did that kind of, that experience change your vision of your life that you would have later on? And what you thought you would do? Yeah, I think I just, it actually, it was uh, the reason it came about is a friend actually said, look, I'm going to go to India and do this teacher training. Like I, I practiced yoga all the time anyway. I was really into it. And I was like, do you know what? Why the hell not? I'll go along with you. Then she ended up dropping out. And I was like, do I not? I'd never done anything on my own like this. You know, never mind go to India. Um, and, I, and there was something inside me that was just like, I have to go. And I never went with the intention of thinking I wanted to be a yoga teacher for the rest of my life. Obviously, it's something that I could have done. And I still could do if I wanted to. But it was more the practices and what I would learn along the way. Like it was so the tools that you got from there. Yeah, exactly definitely i i went on to do a yoga teacher's training when i was 26 oh, did? oh there you go this is why you said we have a lot in common yeah. literally literally i was reading through it and i was like no way it seems like that age doesn't it yeah when yeah when you, you're finding yourself a bit yeah. soul searching But i do feel like that was such a transitional point in my life like honestly it feels so spending that time alone with the discipline and what you learn about it's just totally out of your comfort zone but also It's so different to what we know here as well. Did, where did you do your training? I did mine in an ashram in the Black Forest in oh. Germany. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was, it was a bit closer, but okay. uh, so definitely yeah, you had more still. full immersion of the Indian culture yeah. for sure. But uh, yeah, it was it was very intense. Which There was yoga the did you? Shri Shri with? Yoga. Okay. And basically it was seven days a week or yeah. uh, I think it was over a month or a month and a half. It was seven days a week, uh, 5 a.m., 10 p.m. but like all yeah. day program and then like 10 you just like lie down and pass out when i saw it initially i was like i is can't this do this <laughs> like, this is not is this i am legal? not gonna be able to, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> is this child abuse <laughs> yeah exactly i was like this surely can't be right no but you do it don't you you do it yeah. and you show yourself that you can do it but that's the thing as well at that point in my life i felt like i hadn't ever really completed something like I used to have an issue where I would dip into something like dip my toe in it I'm gonna try a bit of that I'm like oh I might try my hand at that and it was the first thing where I had the sense of achievement of getting the certificate thinking I've actually stuck this out that honestly two weeks and I remember phoning my mum and being like mum I can't do this I want to come home 
And then she was like, no, she was like, just do it. You'll feel so much better once it's done. And when I completed it, I was like, so this is what it feels like. Mm. And again, that is a lesson that I feel has stuck with me through life, that it's that feeling of achievement once you've completed something. Just stick with it. It's always worth it. That has really no comparison. Also. No. Definitely. But before that, I'd never really felt that. It's like I dropped out of uni. I'd done all these things. And be- as soon as it got the going got a bit tough for me, I, I you know, threw in the towel. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's an issue as well the nowadays is that we have so much choice. So, you know, it's not like when our grandparents were growing up and it's like, this is what you did. Now the world is your oyster. So you can try your hand, but that's not necessarily a good thing. Like that's it is, it's got, you know, it's got its pros and cons, hasn't it? But No, this is actually a very, very good point. These days we're so overwhelmed with the possibilities that we end up in this analysis paralysis very mm-hmm. often and you don't end up doing anything. That was That was most definitely the case for me. It's like, if people... And People keep telling you you have so much potential. Yeah, but that's, that's the worst, right? Isn't it? That is yeah. the worst. And then and then you think, okay, well, yeah, I have I have potential. Okay, fine. And then you dabble with this, you dabble with that. You're actually good at those things, which is even worse. Yeah. You know, there are some people that they're good at one thing, yeah. and they just double down yeah, on like it. They, they know they want to be a doctor, and they've done yeah. that. And or, they, they or they have amazing. very clear, yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah, that was never good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. buy that, and I'm like, <laughs> I wish. Sometimes I wish I would like that. Was like that, but yeah. So I imagine then you went through the same thing where you were trying different things and, you know, you were good at them and you kind of liked them. And then, but which one should I choose? And if you look down of the timeline, then at least in my case, I was paralyzed with this fear of making this wrong choice. So true. And wasting, I don't know, five, ten years of my life doing this thing that Yeah, I didn't ever want to commit to doing a degree because I was like, what if it's something I don't want to, you know, and then at the end of it, I've then got to study something else again. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I, I don't know about you, but my my solution in the end to that all was just that elimination method and just trying cutting out all thoughts about what could, what will, because that the the future doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. You only have the present moment, and you can work, you know, give you a hundred percent in that moment and yeah. see what happens next, but not think necessarily overthink about what what will what will happen next. Yeah. So method of elimination is what <laughs> did it for me. But also and here you are today. And here we are today, doing something that we love. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, but it's a journey. It's a whole journey for sure. Yeah. And another thing, because I did this same experience kind of, of of yoga training, in my case, I did it because of my mom. because She wanted me to do it. Okay. Was it not something that was in you? Um, It was not on my radar. I did. I had been doing yoga. I was doing yoga, but there were a lot of other things that I were I was more interested in. OK, so that was to me felt like a thing that I literally did for her. Mm-hmm. So it was it was never going to become like that. I would never would have become a yoga teacher. I tried like yeah. in the beginning. I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, well, so, yeah I did yeah. this now. Maybe, yeah. you know, let me do this. But the reason why I'm even mentioning this is because your intention behind every single thing that you do is crucial, is yeah. paramount. I also had a lot of fear mm. because there's so many yoga teachers, especially in Brighton, I had a lot of fear that I wasn't going to be very good. I would feel judged. And it was like that also really put me off teaching, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, that's very true. But it was meant to be now, but at the time it was like I, I came back fully excited you know with all my kind of my my lesson Yoga plans, mat on ready, the back. Yeah, lesson <laughs> plans ready to go like right who's going to be my client and I, I just got the fear and it really stopped me from teaching actually feel the fear and do it anyway I actually said that on the way here to my friend honestly and I was nervous go. coming and I'm like why <laughs> when I'm just having a chat with you but it's because it's something I hadn't done exactly it's totally out of my comfort zone and it's like you just got to feel that fear and do it anyway. Yes, this is another <laughs> reminder. Yeah, and yeah, we need yeah. it. Yeah, and and that's the case with every single thing. Every single thing. First time you do it, it's scary, but you have to push through. It's crazy yeah. how short our memory is. I know. How short, like a goldfish. I mean, how many years have we lived on this earth? And it's the same patterns, and it's the same for every every other person. And as yet well. we still get scared every exactly. time we do something. It's like, what is really going to happen? What are you really afraid of? Mm. Yeah. I want to ask you. How did having kids change your life and your perspective? Like your future? the biggest change in my life, um, obviously. Um, but I didn't plan on having children originally. Um, I was living in London with two of my girlfriends and I actually didn't think I could get pregnant. I mm. hadn't had a period for over a year and I went to see a doctor um, and they said, 
they were like no no it's fine it's really normal like loads of people loads of women don't have periods and they were like come back in another six months if you hadn't had a period and my mum was like no like you need to go and speak so I went to see a Chinese doctor um and he was literally like are you kidding me so in China, if your period is like one day out of its cycle, they will think there is something wrong. There's mm. something that's not in, that's not in balance in your body. So I went to see this Chinese doctor. He gave me all these herbs. And one month later, the next month, my period came back wow. after having these herbs. And yet when I'd seen a doctor, he was like, oh, no, there's literally nothing you can do. In the, in, you know, like a Western doctor. So then because of that, because I hadn't had a period in a year, I was just like, oh, well, I can't conceive. And then on <laughs> New Year's Eve, I conceived my first child, Ava. But I actually didn't think it was possible. So we didn't plan on having her. Mm. We weren't even living together at the mm. time, which was crazy. Um, yeah. And then here we are. Te- that was the 10 rest years ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. um, but I obviously wouldn't change it for the world. And I just feel like I've, yeah, it's been the best, most intense, incredible lesson of my life and experience as well. I, I, always, I always wonder, and I really wanted actually to have, to have a mother on my podcast because okay. obviously I, I I don't have children yeah. and but that's obviously a thought that also crosses my mind and you know it's it's such an integral part of everyone's life and I just always wonder how does your sense of self how does your vision of your future how does your how do your priorities change you well know? I actually felt quite lost at the time so I mm. feel like it was a bit of a blessing so we had my f- best friend and I at the time had been on a game show and won some money and I was like effort I'm just going to go traveling like and spunk the money and just live my best life and then I had my daughter and obviously all of that had to stop it was like I was pregnant so then I had to slow down it was the first time in my life where I couldn't just jump get up and be like f everything it was like as I said as soon as the 26 Mm -hmm. yeah so 10 years ago I'm 36 um yeah for the first time in my life I had to slow down I had no choice and again it's that saying of the choice that I always had was taken away from me but it was actually it was actually a blessing because mm. I had to slow down and just become a mother and I fully immersed myself in pregnancy I loved it um and then I just adored becoming a mum as well she was my everything and still is mm. yeah and you decided to homeschool your yeah. kids when did that decision come and what made you decide on that was it somehow in link- linked to the fact that you were bullied as a kid and so you had some bad memories around that as well it wasn't really, I mean, obviously that is, my memory of being at school wasn't the best. Mm-hmm. So I kind of, but it, obviously you kind of go off your experiences, don't you? So I wouldn't say that that was the determining factor, but it obviously, you yeah. know, went along with my decision. It helped my decision. Um, but no, so basically Ava was enrolled to go to a school. She was literally signed up to go. And we went along for the opening day um, and we met the woman who would have been her teacher and I was just watching her behavior with Ava and she wasn't particularly kind. She wasn't particularly, and I started assessing her and being like, I don't know anything about this woman's beliefs. I don't know, you know, how she's actually going to behave when I'm not even stood in front of her. And I was like, she's going to be spending more time with my child every day than I am. And I just went away feeling really unsettled. I remember telling my dad about the experience and he was like, well, she doesn't have to go to school. And I was like, of course she does. And Everyone like, does it. Yeah, exactly. And he, I was like, of course she has to go to school. And he was like, no, she doesn't. And I'd actually met some teenagers maybe five years prior who had been home educated and they were so intelligent, so confident with adults. And I was like, I'd never really known, obviously you hear about celebrities in America being home educated, but I hadn't, I didn't know it was a thing. Um, and then he was like, why not try it? And so I started looking into like the community in Brighton, whether there was a home ed community, what classes were around. And I just thought, let's try it for a year. Mm. Um, and then that's it. That's it. So she was four at the time so that's yeah five six years now Hmm. we've not looked back and I don't know you know with secondary school if she wants to go she can but I don't think she seems so happy she really is a very both of my kids are really happy children and I just think with the complications and the way especially social media and all these difficulties that kids have to go through at school now and the challenges I don't know and the world is changing so much as well that I don't know if what kids are even learning is relevant or going to be relevant in the future that's such a good point you know that's such a good point I mean to me homeschooling makes a lot of sense precisely because of the reason that you mentioned which is where what are they soaking up every day Mm -hmm. who are they learning from Mm -hmm. you you have no control over that you haven't picked those people you don't know what their life philosophies are you don't know what their values are yeah you don't know. And you can't control that. You can't. Yeah. And the parents of the kids that they're 
going to be friends with and what are their beliefs by, yeah. you know that makes a lot of sense to me but in in practical sense there's a little bit of stigma i guess in society surrounding homeschooling uh with the yeah. argument of you know are they going to know how to converse socialize. and exactly socialize with their kids and things like that it's literally the biggest thing that was one of the myth. first questions that i get and it is a myth it's like my kids are so social they're so confident ask pretty much anyone who meets them it's like they're so polite they're so they're not shy and they speak to adults as adults because they're not told from an authoritative figure to sit down and put your hand up they talk to us as though you know they're, they're the same age as us you know not in an arrogant way but they they are seen as equals and yeah so i think the social and they've got loads of friends it's absolute bs that they don't socialize we don't just sit at home at our you know dining table every day which also another thing I got a lot of questions from people after the lockdown because a lot of mums had to homeschool their kids during lockdown and everyone was like, how do you do it? It was awful during COVID. It was awful for us during COVID because we're used to being out every day, mm. whether it's in COVID, you're sat there, you know, it, I mean, it wasn't an awful time in the lockdown, but what I mean is that it's not a usual homeschooling experience. You know, they're out experiencing life normally. We don't sit at home at a desk every day. And that's my point. Obviously, you had to do that in the lockdown, didn't you? So Yeah. So uh, another one of my questions was going to be, what are the main challenges that you faced in the homeschooling process? I suppose it's giving up so much of your time mm -hmm. and knowing what I'm teaching them is the right thing. You know, I'm always a little bit worried that they might be missing out on information that they might need to know. Um, also, just, you know, you have to have a lot of patience it's you know it's pretty challenging being with your kids all the time i mean they have they've recently just started going to like a, it's like a home ed school so two days a week project-based learning so there's no tests mm. on a monday and a tuesday they go there and they're with other home educated kids with with primary school teachers who left the school system because they didn't believe what was going on was right for kids for their growth i love that yeah that they, so they, they do that two days a week so then they're with like 15 other kids all mixed ages so they do so they do that do that on a Monday and Tuesday which is actually now the perfect balance because I found that I was starting to struggle a little bit because again if you want to have a bit of a career yourself it's hard to find the balance if you've got your kids and they're obviously the priority as well mm. this actually is another thought of mine which is how do you balance potentially a career your children your marriage how do you do that well I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no um oh well the thing is, it, well, with homeschooling, for example, sometimes they would come along to, if I was doing like a photo shoot or if I was going to an event. And again, it doesn't mean that they have to be sat in a lesson. So I just bring my kids with me wherever I go normally. Mm. Um, so that's one bonus. But I think what I've found to be the biggest catalyst for finding balance is waking up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Like there is no comparison to how organized I feel, to how productive I am to how my day because I will make sure I find time for all those things during the day that I have certain hours or periods even you know to say that 10 minutes after I finish sending those emails I'll go on my phone rather than just picking it up because that is obviously a time stealer isn't it like your phone steals so much of your time definitely but, and also I'm really fortunate in that my job is flexible so I can work when it fits in to my schedule so you can kind of fit your work around your kids yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, mm. don't get me wrong, sometimes it is a balance and I get stressed, you know, and I feel like I've deserted my kid, you know, but we all have that, don't we? It's mm. like when you're cooking dinner and the kids are around, it's like there's always going to be challenges. And I'm not saying it's easy and that I've got it all together, but waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning is the biggest game changer. How much time does that give you alone, alone time? So my youngest wakes up about 7, 7 30, and my eldest about 8. So mm. I have a good two, three hours. Mm. But again, it's like I, I did, I wrote a post yesterday and it's saying, if you're a night owl and you are more productive at night, you go for it. But I know I'll just end up scrolling or watching TV at night. So what benefit is that doing anybody? Whereas if I wake up in the morning and I've worked out, I've had my shower, I've written my gratitude list, I've done a meditation, all these things that I know will make me feel patient and ready for the day. Then when my kids wake up, rather than being all groggy, then waking me up, I'm like, morning. And honestly, it makes such a difference. And then that has a cumulative effect and knocks on to the rest of my day and on to the rest of your family yeah exactly it's like they say when you have s with self-care if you look after yourself then that is just going to have a positive impact on your family isn't it as well most definitely because if you're stressed and run down how can you look after anybody else
mornings are magic. <laughs> they like literally, literally are. They I, literally I sometimes are. I'm like, how do you even explain the magic? But they just are. And this good point. How Before do you explain sunrise. to somebody that hasn't experienced morning of practices mm-hmm. and how that primes you incredibly energetically to go through your day with this literally positive attitude and yeah. energy? How do you how do you explain that to people? Because I have my own rituals, right? If you I wake don't, up early. I don't wake up super early. But again, you don't have kids either, do you? You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah for, for for now, yeah. for now. But yes, so uh, I wake up. I do my I do my meditation. I do my mirror work. I do my visualization. I do my you know the healthy drinks, some sort of exercise. Now I'm practicing qigong as well. So I'm amazing. learning a lot of yeah, a lot of fun that. stuff. My stepmom, yeah, she mm. does that. She does. Yeah, yeah. Mm. She so she's a yoga teacher. So she was who lived with my dad. She still lives in their off grid cabin, but she's a yoga teacher and she uh, teaches qigong within her yoga practices I as well that. so yeah it's, it's very cool. nice very and actually i find that to be very good intro for people that maybe are a little bit you know skeptical can't find their way with maybe yoga or breath work it kind of incorporates everything so it's the breath the body and that mindfulness literally yeah. you have to get a hang of it but yeah yeah but anyway but th- what's nice is she incorporates it all together so you have the movements within the yoga practice so it's like yeah it's pretty cool interesting yeah i'll hook you up with her page <laughs> yes very good i'll try she also teaches forest bathing as well which is another thing i totally recommend interesting yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah look into that yes but i'd like to ask you so if there are some people watching or listening that yeah. are considering homeschooling what are the things that they need to think about what are the things that they need to keep in mind what do they need to be ready for and how do they best prep i wouldn't necessarily say that you kind of can prep because everyone's different every every you know a lot of people who choose to home educate can often be children that don't fit in within the school system um but find a community is my biggest kind of um i I would just say to find to try and find a a local community so that you have support groups so that you can find other kids and that are being homeschooled as well that is a really good place to start and there's like loads of facebook groups out there if you search in your local area and you'll be able to find other mums that are homeschooling as well Mm. so kind of find um support in that way in the community already yeah 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 what if nobody's doing that i've never (laughs) done it that way so i don't know um but also just teach intuitively so so much of what we learned at school i know i didn't i don't remember and i don't need to use now so if the child is particularly interested in something then go with that let them decide you know, because then also that will stay with you so much longer than something. When you're fed information, it, it kind of doesn't really stay with you. Whether it's when you are actively searching for the information, then it will stay with you mm. on a totally different level. And you remember that. Because you're deciding. Yeah. It's like, honestly, my one of my worst topics is probably geography. And someone could say, where's this capital city? And I wouldn't have a clue because I had no interest in it. Whether it's with nutrition, because I'm interested, I would want to talk about it for hours. And it's kind of the information goes in at another level. Mm, definitely. So if a child has a passion or an interest, I would definitely try and encourage them to follow that. And they have so much more time to be able to do that. And in terms of uh, practically the age kind of periods where you yeah. do that, is that literally you can do it throughout their yeah they don't ever have to go to school Mm. if they don't want to where does that leave them in terms of jobs later on and And again Mm -hmm. like can you be an influencer without us like okay we'll 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 get into it right now what i'm saying is you don't need a qualification to do that this is what i mean about the world changing Mm. like with meta and all the it's like who honestly knows in 10 years time or you know five years time what the world is going to be like yeah and they could get a degree in something it can be absolutely useless. to be fair they can get a degree online as well without yeah. ever leaving their home but also a lot to. of the big universities actually say they want ho- a lot of homeschool kids because they think differently mm. they th- you know they think outside the box rather than what they've just been taught you know they want open-minded so so you touched upon briefly uh yeah. on the influencing topic i want to talk about your uh journey with entrepreneurship and business mm-hmm. so it looks to me when i kind of connect the dots that your um, actions were mostly propelled by your heart. So when your brother got very <laughs> sick, it's well, okay, then I picked up. Uh, I feel really things. lucky that they, they've been able to be mm. led by my heart, though, you know, yeah. It's really due to you. 
So this is also what I want to say. So it must have been you that followed that intuition versus just some sort of rationale, you know, calculative rationale. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I don't think very. But, but that also takes big trust in yourself. So I guess your spiritual journey kind of really primed you to be able to do that. But so for the audience to, to understand, when um, your brother got very sick, you tried to help him by giving him good food, yeah. uh, nutritional, organic f produce, and you couldn't find it. So you yeah. created a company, yeah. Juice 45, 45 Juice. 42 Juice, very 42. close, very close. Uh, 42 Juice. 42 Juice, <laughs> yeah. I would like some juice right now. <laughs> yeah, so. And then when you had kids you decided to sell that business yeah. uh, in favor to spend more time with your kids yeah yeah so talk to me a little bit more about that decision making was it always just clear for you that okay this is the right this feels to me like the right thing to do this is what i'm doing or what was the internal what within why we closed struggle the business no rather why? sometimes we're often told, you know, what we need to do. Then there are things that make sense to us mm -hmm. because of the circumstances, because, yeah. you know, we're in this position now and maybe that person could help us or the circumstances are favorable for certain things. Yeah. But then there are these feelings that we have within us, which is no, actually that path to take is a completely different one. So did you have any sort of internal struggle when you had to close the business and you, you wanted to focus on your kids more or... Well, I was, I'd kind of started influencing or not, you know, not getting paid or anything like that, but I'd started up my Instagram when we still had the juice bar anyway, mm. um, because my business partner, Natalie took on a much bigger role when I had had my two children because she wasn't pregnant. I took a bit of a step back. And then when she fell pregnant, it was like, you know, mm. and also the issue is with, I wish it was still here today because honestly, you ask anybody, our juice bar was like 100% the best. Like we were so thorough. We made sure everything was organic. Like our recipes were incredible. Like the best smoothies you've ever had. And I'm very hungry now. Yeah, I know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Um, but the issue is they don't make it easy for small businesses nowadays. And they don't make it easy, especially if you want to be organic as well. Like organic produce is so expensive. Someone would come in and be like, why should I pay seven pounds for a juice when I can get one for two pounds from Tesco like a, a but and it's like you don't realize the produce that is going into that and yet they'd happily pay 10 pounds for a salad do you know what I mean so mm -hmm. it's like we had a lot going against us and even though it was successful it wasn't like we were making loads and loads of money we were breaking even and it was like what is it's hard graft as well juicing is really hard work making smoothies is really hard work and we were like we're spending you would work in the in the yeah store. Mm -hmm. I mean there was people who worked there as well but it's like you're missing out on family time and it's like for what as well we wanted to help people but when the system doesn't make it easy for you to succeed as a small business it's really disheartening you know so that's when you decided to go into the direction of blogging influencing yeah. so i'd already kind of started that mm -hmm. anyway and then it just so happened i actually i was someone's pa for a little bit for like in bet in between the two and then that wasn't really working so I actually took the leap like I hadn't I think I'd had one paid job and I just believed that it would work and it was so weird because it just did mm. sometimes you just Tell I know it sounds that. so freaking cheesy but you just have to trust the universe and it often has your back what was it what the job my first job oh my god I can't even remember it's really <laughs> bad isn't it I actually can't remember I've gone completely mind blank I remember what the most the first job that I had, it wasn't paid, but I remember getting a buggy for free oh. and being like so excited <laughs> by that because with my first child, I paid like a thousand pounds for a bugaboo and they were like the best buggies. And then when I worked with them, to me, that was like dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was my first kind of like moment when I feel, felt like I'd made it when I got a free buggy and then, yeah. But I can't actually, that's really bad. I can't remember what my it's, first it's, It was a while ago, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, it was a while ago. <laughs> well, I want to delve deeper into this because, uh, you know, clearly internet is the way to go. Yeah. Um, so how followers do you need to have to be an influencer? What, what sort of criteria prerequisites do you need to have to be considered one? Do you know what? I don't know how much, how many you would need. I, I would probably say a minimum of like 10,000. Um, I think because there's lots of apps out there where you can kind of start to get paid jobs. They don't pay that well, but it's a good way for you to start making connections with brands. So I know there's apps called like Tribe. So for example, say if you have like 10,000 followers, then you would probably be able to work with them. They may, as I say, they may not pay well, but it's a way for you to kind of 
start building a bit of a business within that as well and putting the feelers out and then all of a sudden brands will start to notice you when especially when other brands repost Mm. so another tip that I have is what really worked for me is when when I worked with the brand Bugaboo because they had such a huge following when they reposted my images I would then get loads of followers off the back of that Mm. so if you can create beautiful content and then have a brand repost that you'll then be seen do you know what I mean? Leverage and other the thing is, reels platforms. and stuff weren't around when I first started. So now you can have a viral reel and it, you blow up. I mean, like, for example, last year I had a reel that went viral of my daughter and it had 12 and a half million views and I grew 20,000 followers from that. I had 40,000, now I have 60,000. So I'm like, it can just be that you make that one reel and that's it. How, does, how do the followers translate into the monetization? Definitely depends on the quality of your followers, um, where they're based, uh, what sex they are, what age they are. So I will often send over a screenshot of my insights that will tell pe- tell the brand, um, as I said, what sex they are, what age they are, because then they can tell that they're not like bought followers, for mm. example. You can see that the age range is like 31 to 39, mainly based in the UK or the US. Like all that they're real followers, they're not like 90% in India. Do you know what I mean? So they <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So do not buy followers, whatever you do, guys. Um, if you want to, you know, make a profession with Instagram. Um Yeah, we were talking about how do the follower count convert into monetary figures? Well, again, so I have some friends who have way more followers than me, and yet I get paid more hmm. for a post. So I don't actually know. I think it's based on your engagement, the Mm. quality of the content that you produce, um, what your message is, uh, what market you're trying to target as well. So I have a very strong mum following. So if there is a brand that is trying to target mums, I know that they may pay me more. But say if you're like a fashion blogger and you're working with like Pretty Little Thing or all these fast fashion brands, that it almost kind of, I would say lessens your value Mm. do you see what i mean no (laughs) because i don't know about this world so if you explain to me again so mainly because as well it's it's because you're there's so much competition Mm. as well so it's like you look like everybody else i see that's kind of my point so basically find your niche yeah yeah 100 percent. and this is what i say to a lot of people now they're like how do you do it and i'm like unless you have a usp you need to have some form of usp yeah so whether that be wellness or you have some idea or you know you're you're struggling with something talk about that it's like talk about experience it you know what do people will associate you with yeah they they want to get some service they want some advice or some help or something from you do you know what i mean if you're just posting pretty pictures what what's what value what value are you bringing to the table amen to that yeah (laughs) i've done that and i feel like i've done a bit of both my engagement when i post something with a bit more depth and context is totally different really yeah and i feel better about it and then the response i get dms and i get people saying oh my god you this is so helpful and this is such a good point i want to touch upon it for a second Mm -hmm. um so for myself i had uh, a, a private profile on instagram right and you know your usual album type profile um and of course then i went through this whole journey of you know creating this podcast and and taking basically a new path in my life and a part of that decision was also okay what do i want to put out in the world and what message am i sending what am i representing yeah so at some point i realized as much as i you know i love i like to dress up i like to look nice i like to look at nice pictures of other people as well yeah. you know yeah you can get inspiration yeah. i constantly get like outfit inspiration from people i'm not saying that that doesn't have a place because it definitely does definitely does yeah. but ultimately as you say what more what more is there you know mm-hmm. so i'm happy to be associated with you know certain messages and bring some sort of value to people when they look at my profile through your podcast mm-hmm. etc but when i look for example at the in the beginning right when i just started posting you know maybe some sort of motivational things or some sort of um you know some sort of quotes versus a selfie then that selfie would get so much more engagement you know so much more like yeah. so it's very interesting for me to hear that for you it's different but i guess that also comes with time and with people yeah. having associated you to then that value content for a longer yeah. time so then they know what to expect yeah if, if i'm honest i'm just getting i've started to feel empty when i just post a pretty picture and it's like i just really want to 
bring people value. It's like, mm. what has helped me? And then from that experience, how can I help others? Mm. You know, so as I say, it's like, I did a post about the benefits of waking up at 5 a.m. It's like, to me, that has changed my life so much. And so you want to share I that? I can share that with yes. people. You know, what? that's what it's for, really, isn't yes. it? That's influencing. Yes. Do you know what I mean? In my eyes, yeah. Most definitely, most definitely. And I think you go through that for anybody who's going through a transition right now. They're, you know, repurposing their profiles or they're changing their direction in life and are thinking about changing also the content that they're putting out there. I think it's worth mentioning, at least it was like that for me as well. And I'm sure it's going to keep being that way that you go through this period where there's a bit of a change of that following. So Mm -hmm. once you start posting completely different, you know, content and types of things, but you will lose for sure. You will lose followers. Oh, yeah. I feel like I plateau all the time because I grow and then mm. I lose. Do you know what I mean? But I'm like, if they're not interested in this content, they're not going to be Then here. they shouldn't be yeah. here. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, and you have to be but okay with that. It's disheartening sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. But that's why I, th- I think that's why we need to also mention that, that it's, it's super normal. Yeah. But you attract, I always say uh, this thing, which is do you and your tribe will find you. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. You have to, you have to, you have to, you know, take that risk and have that courage to show up as the person that you truly are. And then, yes, some people will leave your life, but that is great. Yeah, because yeah, they, yeah. they weren't there. They don't even know who the real you is. They're not there for the real you. And in fact, they left. To, so they're proving that. So yeah. great, because they made some space for people that actually are interested in who you really are. So courage <laughs> <laughs> and uh, make some changes. Yeah, definitely. Um, still, I want to delve a little bit more into the into the blogging, into the influencing. For anyone that's thinking, you know, to to go into that direction, to start making money with that. Mm-hmm. What sort of numbers are we talking about? Obviously, what I know. As in payment? Yes. I know the range is infinite, obviously. You know, yeah. there's superstars, there's normal people. But I'll say the, the timeline mm-hmm. to build up to an approximate number. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I remember on my first ever post that I did can't even remember what brand it was for and I got 50 pounds for it which then was like cool posting a picture 50 pounds but the reason I started was a friend I remember her telling me that she got paid 500 pounds for a photo and at the time I was like what you put a picture up and you get pa- paid 500 pounds and now I'm earning quite a lot more than that which is to me it's like so shocking but yet actually the work that goes on behind the scenes that people don't see like the emails back and forth the outfit chain, all the shoots and then sometimes it's it the brand aren't happy with it and you have to reshoot and then obviously you have built up this audience so some sometimes i almost feel like do i deserve to be paid what i'm being paid but actually you have built up you know all those years of doing stuff for free all the content that you have created for free actually balances out to now what i'm being paid do you mm, see what i mean definitely you know as well you can't just i was gonna ask you what are the prerequisites what do we need to be ready to do what do we need to have to well it's difficult because nowadays you can make a, a an outfit like a get ready with me reel in your front room and it can go and have like a million views do you know what i mean so it's so different to when i first started when it was just the pictures and you'd make all your feed like color coordinated and it's it, again, it's so different now. The content, is that out of style now? Nobody constantly. cares about the coordination of Instagram. No, I still think you still because the reason being, when somebody clicks on your page and it's all messy and all over the place, unless that's the way you are and that's what they're not looking for that within you. But because you know my feed is partly about style, I try and make it look aesthetically good. So it's not. I don't. I wouldn't not put a picture up because it didn't fit on my feed. But it's definitely something I would think about. So say if I was putting a reel up and you choose the image for that, I would be like, oh, so I've got those kind of tones and I want to take a picture of that. I would maybe use like the camel tones in the outfit that I was choosing because I know it went well with my feed. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 definitely. And then it kind of follows through. Yeah, because in a way, you're positioning yourself as somebody to be followed. You are in, so I guess the audience, like your, your, your average person that would want to follow you for inspiration, they would look for inspiration. They would expect your profile to be somewhat. But it's first impressions, isn't it? You know, so when you first go on somebody's Instagram, your first impression is how you appear to them, you know, how you look. Do you reckon that these days it's almost indispensable for one to be able to have these social media skills and to look to this path? as an alternative of nine to five jobs, if that doesn't sit with them well. 
my only concern now is the competition mm. you know there's and as i said unless you have a usp then it's very challenging unique selling point oh sorry yes a unique selling point but at the same time as i said you can get one video that goes crazy and then you know you've earned however many followers from that so mm. It, again, it's so different to when I first started to when I was building an Instagram. It took so long for me to grow. And then in a week, I had an extra 20,000 followers. So that is crazy. Yeah. And it's like TikTok is something something that I'm almost so afraid of because it's so unknown. And yet you can grow super quick on TikTok. Taking well. those first steps. There you, you go. Say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Calling you out already. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, I love so, that. But I, if you're, if you're, if you want to, give it a go I would say try it because what is the worst that's going to happen you oh. know you're not it's, t it's taking some of your time fair enough but if you enjoy creating content then freaking go for it like I remember my brother taking the mick out of me being like you're so busy this is so embarrassing like standing in the street taking pictures and now he honestly looks at me when I had like a free holiday last year and he would know and he was literally <laughs> like and he was like do you know what cause fair play you smashed it Whereas back in the day, he was like, what are you doing? Like, he'd get really embarrassed. And he mm. would also take the mickey out of my boyfriend taking pictures, mm. you know, and they would like take secret pictures behind and be like, in Insta hubby kind embarrassed. of thing. Embarrassed, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now it's obviously paying off. Now he's laughing, you know. Hi there. I hope you're enjoying this episode. You can listen to the full audio version for free on your favorite podcast app. And if you are enjoying this video version, I invite you to join my exclusive Patreon community to support the making of the show and to unlock a ton of exclusive content, such as the full video episodes, bloopers, some controversial topics, and more personal questions from the guests, and much more. Link is in the description below.